Well, hello again, my YouTube and Facebook viewers. On this beautiful Wednesday morning that the Lord has made, we say again, hello to each and every one of you as we come this on this blessed day uh, to share in the Word of God in another session of Midday Manna. Uh, we pray that your families are doing well during this time, certainly as we are in the midst of uh, this continuing pandemic. We pray that you are being safe, you're being careful. Most importantly, we hope and pray that you're yet still being blessed. If you got up this morning, count that as a blessing from the Lord. And we're grateful and thankful that you've tuned in to us on this another day that the Lord has made. If you would, let us go in prayer. Before we go any further, I just want to lift you before the Lord today, give you strength and encouragement, give you the power of God that it may rest upon your souls in your life on this day. Our God and our Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, O oh God, for the privilege of prayer. Lord, we thank you that you are a God that sits high and yet still looks down low. You see and know all things. You know our heart. You know our heart's desire. As we pray today, Lord, we ask your blessings upon these, your viewers, who tuned in to this session of teaching. Pray, O oh God, that your Holy Spirit would speak to their hearts, that you would give them a listening ear to hear what you have to say. And we pray, O oh God, that it would bless their lives, encourage their lives, and give them the strength and the courage to continue to fight the fight of faith. To the one who may not have accepted you as their Lord and Savior, but yet is tuning in to this session of teaching. Lord, I pray that by your Holy Spirit, Lord, you would speak to their hearts and that their hearts would open up to receive you as Savior and Lord and that their lives will never be the same but, me, but be made better by their fellowship with you. Lord, we ask blessings upon this country, uh, every city, every state. In the midst of this pandemic, Lord, we pray that you would keep your children and protect us, O oh God from this evil pandemic that is running rampant throughout this world. Lord, we ask that you would continue to give us a heart to always look to you for all things. For we know that you are our sustainer. We know you to supply all of our need. We ask that you would continue to be that supplier of all our need. Continue to be that God that is creator and sovereign over all. We ask now, God, that you would touch the heart of our political leaders. They would make the right decisions concerning our country. Not only that, but we pray, oh God, for every citizen, whether they be black or white, rich or poor. Lord, we pray that, Lord, you will cause a sense of unity to enter into their hearts and minds that we may live in this world peacefully and in unity. Grant it now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you would continue to allow your grace and mercy to take care of us, keep us, and show us the way. We'll forever give you the glory. Lord, we'll give you the honor and the praise. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. I want to take this time to thank uh, the Macedonia Church family. It is truly a blessing uh, to have family. And to me, family is so important. I'm a big proponent of family, big promoter of family. I think it's the key to, whole, to the wholeness of life, that is to have a loving family. And certainly I've been blessed to have been given the assignment to shepherd God's sheep, be a part of a wonderful and loving family. Uh, they've heard me cry. They've heard me in my weary days and yet they saw the need to encourage me and lift me up. And so surprisingly, on the first Sunday 
in this month, on this past Sunday, uh, after we had drive through communion, several of the members uh, circled back and formed a line and came through and blew their horns, uh, yelled out their appreciation and their love for me and Sister Curry, gave us cards that uh, were encouraging as well. And we just, I was just overwhelmed, uh, truly surprised. And, you know, in my uh, mid years here, I found myself to be a big crybaby. And certainly they put a frog in my throat uh, and a tear in my eye. Uh, but they were definitely not tears of sorrow, they were tears of joy. And I'm just so grateful and so thankful for my Macedonia church family. Let me say to each of you, you all are, are truly a blessing to the Curry family. We just want you to know that we love you from the depths of our hearts. And you all have blessed us and we pray that we have been a blessing to you all. Truly, I believe that this union was orchestrated and instituted by God and I am truly thankful for it. Your love and your support of this ministry is phenomenal. And we thank you all so much for what you do. You blessed my spirit, you encouraged me, you gave me the mind and the mindset that I can go on a little further now. So thank you again for what you did on Sunday. It was, it was truly uplifting, humbling but uplifting as well. And my soul uh, is full and happy. And we love you all for it. And thank you again. Want to encourage those, uh, we're in the Browns Creek District Association is in session. And the uh, 140 uh, first annual session is up and running. It began on Sunday night. Tonight will be the last night uh, that you will be able to witness it uh, live, uh, virtually. Uh, at 6 p.m. on this evening, there will be breakout sessions, but at 7 o'clock, there will be a worship uh, experience virtually. If you just go to Browns Creek District dot org that's browns creek district dot org all one word uh, you can virtually be a part of the worship experience on tonight I've had a phenomenal week certainly the Lord has truly been in his house and has rested upon us I've had some great messages uh, that God had spoken through his men of God and truly we have been uplifted uh, this week uh, through the preaching and teaching of the Word of God continue to be prayerful for the district continue to be prayerful for our moderator that he may continue to keep the structure of the district intact and continue to branch us out and strengthen us as we attempt to strengthen the local churches by working together through education from a spiritual perspective so uh, continue to pray for the district thank each of you for your contributions and thank each of you for your support and for tuning in to us on this week well we're going to go into the Word of God once again and again this day of study those of you that have your Bibles we are in a, a second Corinthians second Corinthians will begin chapter 8 and if you would prepare to go there that is second Corinthians chapter 8 and we shall read a few verses and dissect scripture just for a moment on this beautiful on this beautiful Wednesday if you have your Bibles I'll be reading from a New King James Version of the Bible 
And in that New King James Version, beginning with the first verse of chapter 8, 2 Corinthians, you shall find inscribed these words. And let us look at the first seven verses, if you will. The, Apol the Apostle Paul says, Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, how that in a great trial of affliction the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves, praying us with much entreaty that we should receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God, insomuch that we desired Titus, that as he had begun so he would also finish in you the same grace also. Therefore, as ye abound in everything, in faith and utterance and knowledge and in diligence and in your love to us, see that ye abound in this grace also. Paul had turned his attention when we left uh, chapter 7 on last week. We talked about being a personal example uh, to other believers and to the world as well and not conforming to the ways of the world but living a life, presenting ourselves in a way that the world would conform to our ways. He's now talking to the church as a whole. And he's dealing with the saints there at Macedonia. Macedonia is a larger province, but inside Ma Macedonia, connected to Macedonia, is Corinth, uh, Ephesus. Uh, we'll, we will go to the book of Ephesians. Uh, and as we go to the book of Ephesians, know that Macedonia is kind of the bigger province in which... Ephesus and Corinth exist. So this travel between uh, between cities uh, is not very distant, but yet distant. So he's talking now of the example that has been set forth by the Macedonians in regards to uh, their uh, support of some of the saints who were in need by their way of giving. And can I share with you today, my brothers and my sisters, there will always be a need to reach out and extend help to the poor. There will always be a need for us to be an example to other believers as we encourage one another in the faith and in our walk with Christ. So Paul is kind of giving what is known as a commendation to the believers there at Macedonia uh, in their walk of faith. And so we, uh, as we look at verses 1 through 7, Paul had turned his attention to the collection uh, of the contribution for the poor of the believers there in Jerusalem. And instead of rebuking them and warning them, uh, Paul emphasized the positive motivations for obedience to the will of God. In other words, he was admonishing that uh, giving and taking those gifts to help the poor was a good thing. And it was a positive thing. 
and he wanted to let the believers know that it was the right thing to do and it was a way to strengthen the body of Christ. And so uh, as Paul is admonishing uh, the church for their obedience and their stewardship, we too must understand the importance of being obedient in our giving, being obedient in our support of the poor, uh, not only within our church, but also within our community, because we are the church of our community. And so not only do we need to reach out among the congregation, but we also need to reach out uh, with uh, those who live within the community. It's not a bad thing, and a lot of times we are criticized, the church is criticized uh, by those who don't understand, who aren't a part, uh, who've never had that experience, that the collection of money, they all it's always said by those who don't understand it's always spoken of in a negative way. But uh, let me assure you believers that giving is the right thing to do. Uh, giving of our tithe and our offering, giving of our time and our talent is very important in strengthening uh, our communities, uh, in reaching out to others and to being a light to those who may be in darkness. Again, uh, as Christ gave of himself, uh, we should be willing to give of ourselves as well. And giving goes all the way back to God. God instituted giving. Uh, he gave us life. Uh, he gave us uh, this earth, this air that we breathe. Uh, he gave each of us uh, a part of him God in his own infinite wisdom and in his spirit was a giver and as he gave us life he gave us also the spirit of giving and thus that spirit resides in us and we should exercise that gift that has been given to us uh, by sharing that gift with others and so Paul Wanted to let us know the importance of being an example uh, in giving to others. And he wanted uh, the church to know that it was right uh, to give and take those collections and use those collections to help uh, the poor, those who are in need, and the continual uh, uplifting and upkeeping of the church. Let's look at verses 7, 7, 8, and 9. Let's look at verses uh, 8 and 9. He says, I speak not by commandment, by the occasion of the forwardness of others, and to prove the sincerity of your love. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yea, for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. Uh, Paul sought generous and virtue, uh, and voluntary gifts uh, from the poor in Jerusalem in order to testify the sincerity of the Corinthian uh, Christians. He wanted um, us to know that it was not um, a commandment, but it was actually by his actions that giving was necessary, the giving was important, but also um, that relinquishing of himself that others might have was important. Just as Christ relinquished uh, his throne, the son of the living God, the creator of the universe, who was rich because he owned everything, Although he was rich, when he came to this earth to live, he became as poor and became an example that everyone after him that followed him 
should also have the mindset. Uh, we are rich, but we should not let that richness uh, cause us to feel as though we're entitled or better. But we should take that richness in humility and serve others as if we were poor as well. Uh, yes, um, uh, as I look at the church today, um, a lot of people uh, criticize a lot of our leaders. And some of it is probably duly just uh, because the Lord has blessed certain ministries to do very well. And as, their as the ministries have fared well, uh, so has their leaders fared well. And thus, uh, some leaders uh, live a lifestyle that many would consider lavish. Uh, driving the finer cars, uh, living in the big homes, uh, wearing the finest of clothes, uh, wearing the finest of jewelry. Uh, in other words, looking prosperous. Um, and I share with you, uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, there is nothing wrong with that. Um, Jesus could have done the same thing because he was rich, but he chose not to for the greater good of others. Because what it does do, and we've seen it even today, uh, when, when our leaders live that type of lifestyle, Many speak badly of the leader and of the church, uh, believing that it's just a, a money thing. And certainly that is not true. And can I share with you today that God does not want any of us to live in poverty, uh, nor does he want any of his leaders uh, to live in an uh, impoverished way. Uh, he wants us to live well. Who doesn't want the nicest of things? But I think it does need to be prioritized and put in a certain perspective uh, in that uh, how can one rest when they're living uh, in certain areas, driving particular cars and, and possess a lot of wealth and yet they are members of their congregation who are in need and are hungry. I say to you, I don't think that any true man or woman of God can rest knowing that their congregation or members of the congregation or members of the family, as I would like to call it, are suffering, and yet uh, the leadership is living such a lavish lifestyle. That can be seen in a lot of different ways. There are some pastors that have other occupations besides pastoring and thus have accumulated uh, an amount of wealth that affords them to live a certain lifestyle. But I think it's still important to put it in a certain perspective. I don't think God wants any of us to walk around here um, poor, looking poor, looking downtrodden. I think he wants us to present an air that you know the Lord has prospered us and blessed us but I think there should be uh, a way to, to portray that and it doesn't have to be in an overly lavish overly lavish style Jesus did not uh, but I, I want to share with you all today you know a lot of people have also said that you know when Jesus lived here he you know he didn't have anything uh, Jesus didn't have to want for anything because he had everything. Uh, everything that he needed, uh, you know, it was supplied for him. Uh, he never went hungry because everywhere he went, he was going to get fed. Uh, he didn't necessar necessarily have to have a true place of res residence because everywhere he went, he was going to meet someone who was going to welcome them into his home. And so, uh, having that type of persona and having lived that type of life and having that type of character and charisma about himself Jesus was rich in a way that a lot of people 
have failed to, to actually look at when it comes to his life. Uh, he, he didn't walk around with holes in his clothes. He wasn't ragged. Um, uh, some of the uh, clothes that he wore uh, in that day uh, was actually of good quality uh, and he was well dressed. He didn't walk around dirty nor did he have holes in his garments. Uh, Jesus lived well. And so this whole idea that Jesus walked around looking like a beggar is a fallacy. Uh, Jesus lived well. Uh, he just didn't have one particular place of residence. Um, and like I said, everywhere he went, he was welcomed by somebody. Although there, there were some that did not welcome him, everywhere he went there was somebody that welcomed him. So uh, let us not get it twisted. Uh, Jesus didn't walk around here looking like a beggar. Uh, Jesus fared well and lived well um, in his lifetime. And even as a child, um, Mary and Joseph, uh, once they were married and had moved back uh, into the vicinity of Galilee, uh, he was, we know Joseph to be a carpenter, and Joseph fared well uh, in his business of carpentry. And so they, they weren't, you know, they weren't just poor. Uh, they lived, they lived a comfortable and decent life as God has a desire for everyone. And we have a responsibility as well if we so desire to live that type of life. There has to, has to be some accountability on how we live our lives. Speaking on, on that, I'm speaking in terms of, number one, having a job. <laughs> that, that, you know, God doesn't just open up and pour down blessings and you know, put money in your pocket without you having the desire to go out and work for what you need. Um, not only that, in finding a job, um, when you've received revenue, uh, budgeting that money for the things that you may desire. Uh, a lot of people live well because they've learned how to budget that which they have. Uh, there are many that are, w that are within the congregation uh, that seem to be poor and seem to have it hard but if you were really to investigate their life and their lifestyle, if they were to live their lives better by budgeting and being wise, uh, they could live better lives themselves. Uh, it's, it's all in how that person views their life and the importance of having or accumulating uh, some of the things of the world in which they desire. Uh, don't put it all on the fact that you know, you didn't have a fair chance. Everyone has a chance. You have to have the desire uh, to want and to have. It's just like wanting to be, uh, wanting a job and don't not having a job, but yet sitting at home and says, well, the Lord's going to bless me with a job. I'm just going to sit here and wait on him. I'm going to keep praying and wait on God. Well, you can sit there and pray and wait on God all day long. But if you haven't gotten up and gone out and filled out an application for a job, don't expect the job to come knocking on your door. It requires effort on our behalf as well. And so Paul says to the believers there uh, in Macedonia, uh, he wanted to commend them for being an example and, and really was speaking to motivate them to continue it. But also put it in perspective as well uh, is not to be flaunted uh, but to be used responsibly uh, Jesus did not flaunt the fact that he was rich uh, he just became an example uh, and, and used uh, what he had to serve others as we should as, as well today let's look at verses uh, 10 uh, 10 through 15. Let's look at verses 10 through 15. The Apostle Paul writes, And herein I give my advice, for this is expedient for you, 
who have begun before not only to do, but also to be forwarded a year ago. Now, therefore, perform the doing of it, that as there was a readiness to call, a readiness to will, excuse me, so there may be a performance also out of that which ye have. For if there be first a willing mind, mm, just talked about it, it is accepted according to that a man hath, or not according to that he have not. For I mean not that other men be eased, or ye be burdened, but by an equality, that now at this time, your abundance may be a supply for their want, that their abundance also may be a supply for your want, that there may be equality. As it is written, he that have gathered much had nothing over, and he that had gathered little had no lack. And so Paul now uh, was concerned about there being equality in the church, uh, in their distribution of funds, uh, in their sharing uh, their wealth, uh, in their sharing that which they possess. Paul wanted to stress the importance of having the mind of making everything equal. Do you remember when on the day of Pentecost, there a few days after, that as Peter was preaching through those early days, that many sold their possessions and, and laid uh, their possessions and that which they had sold, the, the, the wherewithal from what they had sold, uh, the profits from that which they had sold, uh, they took all of their possessions or the profits thereof that had been sold and laid it at the apostles' feet with the intention that it would be spread among the believers that there would be equality throughout the body of Christ. Paul really goes back to that time and shares that with the church today or the, the church that's in the text to let them know uh, that it would be better and it would show strength and love for one another if there was equality within the church. Is there equality within your church today? Is there anyone that has a desire to sell all that they have, lay it, bring it before the church, that it may be spread among the congregation that we all may have? Would you be willing after working for 35, 40 years on a job and have built up your retirement, and you built up your pension, would you be willing to take that pension money now and lay it before the altar, present it to the church, that the church may use it to spread it among the congregation, that there would be an equality among the believers within this church family or within your church family? I'm smiling because as I say that, I know many of you are probably shaking your heads, probably saying there is no way because I feel as though I'm just speaking as I believe some would speak. I worked for this. I deserve this. Why would I give back all of that that I've worked for and distribute it among folks who may not even want to work? maybe never had a desire to work, always had their hand out, never tried to build up anything but spend everything that they had. Why would I do that? I know many of you are thinking that. 
It's quite understandable. But just know that Paul wanted believers to have the mindset that your possessions and those things that you possess, those material things, should not take precedent over your relationship with God, your fellowship with the saints, uh, your willingness to be an example you know, in giving. You should be willing to give it all for the sake of Christ. Are you willing to give it all for the sake of Christ? The Bible teaches us that we should. But there will be many that will tell you, especially those that are of the world, that will tell you that you'd be a fool to give all that you work for and consider it nothing and give it to those who may be deemed undeserving. But Paul wanted to give them the mindset that whatever we have, whether we had a willing mind to, to achieve it or not, whether we have or have not, whatever the case may be, have the right heart, have the right mindset that they have no considerable value when it comes to your relationship with God. In that, you be willing to give it all up for the sake of Christ. That's the mindset. And each of you should have that mindset. Be thankful, be grateful for that which you've accumulated over the years and the Lord has blessed you to have the mind, the due diligence, the self-denial, uh, the structure, all those things that you had to implement in your life to be able to achieve that which you've achieved. Be thankful for that. Be grateful for that, but don't esteem it to be anything when it comes to your faith and your walk with Christ. It is nothing compared to that. Know that. Share that. One of the biggest issues that we have in our world today and one of the biggest battles politically between, I believe, between Republican and Democrat. Let me just say it in that manner. The Republican Party is always about the rich getting richer and the poor remaining poor. In that there has to be separation. That's why the rich are always voting Republican because Republicans normally give tax breaks to the rich and the wealthy. They may continue to create jobs so the poor can continue to work and receive meager means. But from a spiritual perspective and really from a democratic standpoint, The democratic standpoint is that that we all should could should consider ourselves equal and in the world in which we live today um, we, we will not achieve that from a worldly standpoint but we should be able to achieve to achieve that in the body of Christ in that when we come together as a body uh, in the body of Christ it's not about your wealth. It uh, doesn't matter how much money you have. It uh, doesn't matter how long you've been here. Um, we are all equal in the body of Christ. Paul wanted to teach that equality in the things that we possess materially. Also the gifts that God has given spiritually. Whatever we have according to the scriptures and, in, and according to our walk with God. Everything we have belonged to him. And there are, no, there are no big eyes, as we like to say, or little U's. 
in the body of Christ. It has been said many times over that at the foot of the cross, the ground is level, which means that everyone has an opportunity to receive Christ as their Savior. And after receiving Christ as, as our Savior, there's no one greater than the other. There's only one great that is the Most High God. And that is the Godhead itself, meaning God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are the supreme beings. And there's no one greater than the Godhead. So no matter what you have, count it as nothing when it comes to your relationship with God. Know that we are all one. We're all equal in the body of Christ. Whatever we have, whatever we've achieved, it should never take priority over our love and our relationship with God and our love and our relationship with one another. I hope something was said or done today that would further your walk with Christ, but truly it is about our walk with Him. I pray that you will continue to search the Scriptures, that you may apply it to your life, that you may be a light to this world, and that you may glorify our Father which is in heaven. Continue to pray for one another, for we are Macedonia strong. I hope you like my shirt. Uh, big shout out to uh, Miss Kaylee and McLemore. Big shout out to her for she made this for her pastor. And I love it. And truly we are Macedonia strong in the midst of this pandemic. Even before the pandemic and even beyond the pandemic, we will be Macedonia strong. We are the church with the big heart. It's moving forward by the power of and the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Again, we love you. Again, enjoy this day. Enjoy the rest of your week. Better yet, enjoy life. Be safe out there. Be careful out there. Most importantly and above all, be blessed. Till we meet again, God be with you.